All right, so today I have finally been able to use and rent the S52X. I had a wedding photography shoot which I was doing and my good old trusty A7S II just wasn't up for the task anymore given its contrast-based autofocus for photography it's okay. So I decided to rent the S52X. I was pretty interested in it. You know, obviously I've looked at all the reviews and all the people saying stuff about it, but you really don't know if you're gonna like something until you get your hands on it and you use it for a little bit. You go and put it through a shoot, you put it through situations. And I can now say that I have used it enough to really give my honest thoughts on it. And I'm gonna look at it in a different light than a lot of other YouTubers because I'm gonna look at it from a perspective of, does it do the things you need it to do, right? Not what can it do, it's does it do the things you need it to do. Honestly, this camera, I'm getting black magic pocket 4K operation vibes from this camera. So to start off, let's talk about that operation. I love the menu system structure, the button placements, and the overall operational speed of this camera. I've used Panasonic in the past. I actually came from a Panasonic FZ100 was my first camera. And that's like one of those little point and shoots power zoom cameras. And I've always loved the Panasonic menu systems. They are quick and easy and immediately you understand where everything is. That ease of operation really makes me feel like I'm using my pocket 4K, but just shrunken down into a smaller body that is way more portable and is honestly more useful in a lot of scenarios because it has photos. So on the topic of size, that's the other thing I really enjoy. Alongside the quick operation, the overall build quality of this camera feels really, really good. Um, and it's hard to it's hard to explain until you really get your hands on it but the chunkiness of it because the a7s2 is a pretty small dslr in this day and age i think that the s52x's chunkiness it, it feels good in your hands to operate for video because there's a little bit more mass behind your movements there's a little bit more to make it smooth out and, and alongside the amazing ibis in this camera i think the weight and the overall build is just really solid for what you're getting for the price point. The durability, I have no doubt that if I use, if I were to use this thing and have it for months, it wouldn't crap out on me at any point in time. Stepping away from video for a second, let's talk about photography. Cause that's the reason I rented this thing out in the first place was because I had a photo job. Uh, so I did a wedding shoot and it was just a little tiny, you know, ceremony wedding thing uh, in a church somewhere. And I rented out this camera with the 24 to 105 F4 lens. It gave me the reach I needed for a wedding alongside the wideness I would need for, you know, if they wanted to do like some group shot. The picture quality I got out of this camera alongside this lens setup, I was extremely happy with. The dynamic range was great, you know, colors and everything, the stuff you'd expect from a modern camera, it all looks great, the colors look great. But more of the functionality of the camera, I really enjoyed. The back button autofocusing felt great. I'm, I'm a big back button autofocus fan. I think it's way easier to shoot with. And with the autofocus being able to see what subjects are being detected and then being able to use the joystick to swap subjects quickly, it really made the, the speed of shooting in like a scenario like a wedding so nice. And honestly, coming from the A7S II's contrast-based system of autofocusing, this was like, uh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to go back. So for photography and low light at an F4, no problems at all. I was at 12,800 and it gave me really good results. People, I think, are a little overzealous of trying to say, you need 25,800. You don't need 25,800. 12,800 ISO is enough for 99% of use cases, unless you're shooting astral photography where you wanna get the entire Milky Way galaxy lit up like a Christmas tree. It did fantastic for a low light scenario with an F4 aperture when I was you know, rapid firing at like 400 shutter speed. It held up great in post-production grading. It held up amazing with the speed of operation on the day of photo shoots. Swapping over, let's talk a little bit about video. On the video side of things, I've used it a little bit. I'm obviously recording on it right now just to test out the face autofocus and it's gonna do fine. The autofocus is extremely reliable for video. It's basically a Sony A7S III. You know, I'm manually focusing probably 50% of the time unless I'm on a gimbal, which then I'll use autofocus on. It all combines to be this amazingly smooth experience when shooting. And like I had said before with the operation, the results that I'm getting out of this camera really make me feel like it's a shrunken down pocket 4K with a full frame sensor. The dynamic range is fantastic as you would expect with any sensor these days. I'm very impressed that Lumix was able to get this into a mirrorless camera that costs $2,100 or $2,200 or something like that. Like that's crazy. And I'm very impressed with how portable 
and price efficient this system is. So for video, you know, it gives you 4K 60, 4K 24. It gives you the autofocus you need. It has all the video features you could possibly ask for. I think this camera gets five star rating from me. So to wrap up here, I would say, ignore the spec sheets. This camera does what you need it to do. Sure, Sony's do more advanced things, but I would argue that if you're a video shooter who does photos, this one will get you more options for video in the long run, alongside amazing operations similar to Blackmagic that I think is more important than having AI features that are able to lock onto an eyeball. I mean, you could see this autofocus has not quivered this entire time I'm talking. So I've been very impressed with this camera. And if any of you have an S52X or an S52, I would love to see a little dialogue happening in the comments below just about your thoughts on it, you know? But that's about it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.